What is the first thing you need to figure out when planning a beacon deployment? Well, very often it boils down to knowing how many beacons you need and how you're going to deploy them. But it's a bit more complicated than that. You see, depending on the app you're making, the way you're going to deploy beacons is going to be very different. Now, the two most common types of deployments are called point-based and grid-based. Grid-based deployments are primarily used for indoor positioning, navigation, and detailed indoor analytics apps. These apps triangulate your position based on the signal from the beacons nearby. Such deployments require large amounts of beacons placed relatively close to each other to create a dense grid. They can be used in different environments, especially large open spaces where a visitor can easily get lost. For example, a museum. Apps like these can offer contextual content based on the exact location of an app user. So when you approach an exhibit, your phone will trigger a related piece of content. Other uses leverage the indoor navigation capabilities to guide visitors through a venue and offer precision that other technologies can't compete with. So it basically works like GPS, but indoors. But what if you don't need such precision or simply don't have the time or experience to deploy a very complex beacon project? Well, in that case, you should go for a point-based beacon deployment. And I'll explain it next, but first, let's get a cup of coffee. If you're just starting your beacon adventure, chances are you're gonna go for a point-based deployment. And while such deployments are far less complicated and don't require as many beacons as grid deployments, there are a few things you should know. Point-based deployments are the most common type of deployments. Rather than pinpointing your exact location via triangulation, they tell you how far you are from a particular point, often called a point of interest. Your smartphone, or well, any beacon signal receiver for that matter, can approximate the distance from the beacon. Now, this distance is then categorized into three so-called ranges. The first one is called the immediate range, and it tells you when you're standing right next to the beacon. The second one, the near range, is a few steps away from the beacon. And the last one, the far range, is anything beyond five meters. In point-based deployments, beacons are placed at the very area or object you want to interact with. It can be an exhibit, a shopping aisle, checkout, or the entrance to a coffee shop. While grid-based apps rely on a rather high beacon transmission interval, point-based beacon apps usually don't. This results in far greater battery life for the beacon, and in the case of the Beacon Pro, it exceeds the five years of constant transmission. But even if you need the beacon to transmit more frequently, you can extend the battery life of the device by using Beacon Pro's power-saving feature. It limits the transmission interval of the Beacon Pro during particular hours of the day or depending on the light intensity in the room. It can be defined by you. So if you need the beacon to transmit only during working hours or limit the interval after sunset, the Beacon Pro can do so. So it's like siesta, but for your beacons. By now you should know what type of deployment works best for you. But there are things left unanswered, like how many beacons do I need? Or how should I configure my beacons properly? Well, let's find out. Obstructions and materials like a wall, glass, water, and people can all affect beacon signal propagation. Now, once you know what deployment type works for you, it's time to do some on-site research. What we need to make sure of is that the signal propagates evenly throughout the space. Now, in ideal conditions, so an open area like this one, contact IO hardware like the Beacon Pro can transmit its signal up to 80 or even 90 meters. One thing you can do at this point is test how your beacons behave in a given venue and how do they need to be configured. For that, you can use the Contact IO Showcase app. It's equipped with a set of demos to help you understand how specific configurations impact beacon performance. Remember, you can change your beacon configuration in the Contact IO Administration app. Once you've found your ideal configuration, it's time to decide how many beacons you'll need and where to mount them. The rule of thumb is, mount your beacon at least three to five meters high on a flat surface, like the ceiling or wall. Knowing your beacon IDs in advance can save you tons of time. At Contact.io, we can ship beacons customized with custom IDs, pre-configuration, or even adhesive if you want it. So if you already know what you want, please let us know.